seven o'clock. Mm. Evening all. If I can ask Evening. you all to mute. Evening. Evening. Evening peeps. Evening. Welcome for another week. I've got a Right, let's get going. <laughs> this is down little this morning. No shortage of tomatoes down there. So uh, if you need them. Right, I took this off the off the box tonight. Uh, Fantastic Beast Natural History. Why? Because if you remember my Zoom sesh uh, last Sunday, we were down line with Regis for a couple of days. And uh, this come on. Natural History Museum in London. My mate Mary Anning, fossil woman from Lyme Regis. And that is one of hers, what I found. So I thought, oh, I'll rewind that, take a photo for the troops. Pass that to our Ben and all, we'd love that. This is just to show you the, the strength in nature. This is taking the hound for a walk this morning, leaning in. Got the fence in there. There's a, obviously a tree that's split, but it's pushing them bars across. Just the strength. Of Love it. Right, February update. Where have I been in February? Uh, 15 cities. Lime Regis. Only 39 places. Meaning the uh, talks have just started coming in. Well, uh, in the last um, couple of weeks or so. This was lid in uh, Lidl last week. And I noticed that chap there. So we get a close up on him. And as you can see, that's the one out of Sue uh, a few months ago. And there, there's a chap in the bottom, Lou. Still going away nice. Thank you, Sue. Also got these in little, had a quick nose of them. Uh, turn the bag over. Good size Gladys, nice and clean. Well, I'm, I couldn't get no more. I've got no way to bung them. I've also got these out again. But that's the one that I had. Uh, I got a chip bag last year, opened it up, and the ingredients was crap. And uh, somebody's put somebody else doing a trial with the compost. This is the um, peat free compost. In fact, I'll, I'll make the photo and put that on next week. But it, it was rubbish. And uh, this one here. one I had last year. I thought that was the one from Asda, but we'll come on to that in a bit. Right, my mate, my um, can of mate from Canada, Sylvain, he also put these on, coldest, so he's into them as well. And that's in winter. And they've had some, uh, I think it's minus 34, they've had. Gordon Betty. So for them, he's got a good setup in his house. Someone tell us in a little last week, I knew you know I like it was raisins and the new one they bought out was hazelnuts mm. i ain't had them for moons and as soon as i've tasted one it brought back memories so that's another ingredient for me nuts right these i bought on um well took photos of i've got to um, send with me books the book on compost is on um amazon and any updates you can send to them and I'll put new photos on or take some off or whatever you want to do. A bit of editing. And there's a, a few people saying there's nothing in your book. Um, say just a couple or one person on their own. They, they can't chop everything up in a book and all this crap. So I thought I'll take a couple of pictures. And that's what I've done here. Meaning if you are on your own or just a couple, just cut it up with scissors. Uh, it takes 10 minutes or something for uh, keep your brain occupied. And just bung that in your bin. Mix it up before it goes in. Spread it all out. Bung your carpets back on. Posting. Yeah. Ray, I've got a, a, a good fjord tonight. It's another good one. Brazilian uh, bonsai artist, Bougainvillea, 
Loving. Look at that. Look at the thickness of that. Poker. Love it. Oh, who's that? This is Paul. I brought up to take his photo because he's had shorts on all year, all winter. And he come up to the club and he got jeans on. Now, what was all that all about? Has he got a date? Has he meet in the future in all? Bloody gold. <laughs> This was our uh, committee meeting. Obviously, we have a committee meeting a week before the general meeting. Uh, this was obviously after the meeting had finished. And there's uh, the three stooges left. Uh, on the night, I told him I was uh, packing in running trading ships. Which was uh, a shock to him. But, uh, <coughs> show will still go on as it were cheers troops well this is the one going down as down, down the escalator and i saw this lot out i always go and have a nose price it up or whatever I I miracle grow i've never had one of them or opened up i know a few people do have the miracle grow I swear by it uh, not only really seven quid a bag. While I was down, I was I need another carpet. So I was like in the carpet shop, and these were the odd mats he had outside. I think that was three quid. Thought that'll do. This is my biggest carpet out of the compost bin. As you can see, it's getting a bit sparse. I need another one on top of them anyway. And look, my carpet was perfect. So I'm gonna cut round him. Just standing on it. Near enough. Just bung him in there. But I wanted this off the back end. I put a bit of a, it was the original carpet, there was no backing on what I'm using. And uh, I, I don't know what this is. So I'll get it off with a um, wire brush. And then it just pulled off. Uh, it looks like a fire retardant, Mick. Hey? Fire retardant, probably. Hey. Yeah, we use it on public work as fire retardant, but by looking at it. Yeah. Well, I've got some hot wire to put that on. That took about three minutes. I just pulled it and it can come off. That'll do me. I doubt the worm's getting gut egg. So I'll just bung that on, see how we do with that. Right, squirrels, now because I've covered everything, I call go around and looking for the nuts and buried or looking at anything. So I've got to cover all these pots as well. So I'm digging everything up, looking for stuff. So I've got me netting out, measured out the width. Just cut that across. Uh, <coughs> that one was meant for the next general meeting. So I'm just doing these two to start off with. Uh, once I've got the size, then I've got my pegs, which are here. So there's one on either side, one at the top. The way that when I've cut through there, then that goes over the other two. Then I shall cut round there with the scissors. Perfect. That was stuff in digging that up. And the other one. And I was just saying the last one. But I've got to pass time. So that's them two done. And I'm going to do that one on the end. There he is. Perfect. He's been digging at him up and all. Well, the stuff in the greenhouse, I thought while the weather was good, I might as well do them as well. Because, well, once I do go outside, I'm going to have to do them anyway. So I might as well do them now while the weather's good. So I bought all them out. Now these goose gogs, there's one red and one green. If you remember, I got them up at the tunnel uh, last week. But because these have uh, got spikes on them, 
mean, and I've got to watch the hound wherever I put him. But I might elevate him. I might even go in there. I'm still oil and oil in yet. But uh, I've done them as well. Just cut them out. Put my pins in. And then cut around. If these need trimming as well, same as any fruit. If someone's touching someone else and rubbing it, you know, I'll cut the weakest one off or the one I don't want. Or obviously any dead wood. And then I'll, I'll just give a quick trim as well. So that's where they are at the moment. I could get away with leaving in there, I might try it anyway. Because my blackberry, which is obviously in the back there once the season warms up spring in three weeks he will start growing across the back wire and in across that wire meaning i should be able to get away with these lot these tubs being where they are there but we'll, we'll see how we do this tree was down that end which was the cherry cordon. Jobbed him as well. Put him back down there. I think that's most of them now. Right, this was on um, was two days ago. Somewhere when they put so much on that happened a while back, obviously back 2017. And I thought I'll put this on again. This was like um, a, a doctor's and it's like a, a patient's association as well. But they, um, this is where I first met Darren Rudge, BBC Radio Dublin. Paul coming to, me, to this event. Yeah, I did Molly as well. Oh, but it, I remember that. It was a good sesh. It's now Wilson Hall. That's where we used to have the show, Collegate. If we go on to that one, that's a bit blurred, but basically it was Gardening for Health. And uh, Ali Bloomer, he's a chap who set it up. Chair Witchbury, who's Witchbury Doctors, PPG. I think it's Patient Group, Summit Patient Group. Like the well, PTA, PTFA, it's with a score. It be, this is like the same thing but with the doctors and uh, they was doing a thing with a garden for health and he asked me if I'd do a spiel I put me input mm -hmm. I did so there's a few who had their bits then I put mine in and uh, I, I did a proper talk for them put uh, different photos together basically keeping fit in, in body and mind Basically, outdoor was keeping your brain active and your body was young doing something. But uh, enjoyed it. Uh, but we had some good speakers. But um, if that comes up again, so will be there again. And here he is, Darren Rudge. What he put on. I mean, look at that. I don't know where to stay in the room, but you are seeing them. Imagine they're dead, dead in and the spiders, they're going to sit down there and you. Where yeah, that was. This was in our local uh, free paper. I think that it comes out every three months or something. And then uh, ours are in town hall. Um, I've just changed it to town hall. Well, you can see that there's nothing going on. I know Dudley's bigger than ours, I think. Starbridge is a bit posher than us. But we're, we're left out. And I've asked a couple of councillors who are still talking to me. It says, I'll do a free tour on composting raised beds and no dig. Ours are in town hall. You just pay for everything else. I'm just waiting for a comeback on that. But, uh, See how we go. 
is my mate again, Sylvain Canasardi. Our provisional supplier who's proud to say that their can is a virus free. I'm supposed to be blind or what? That's a faulty he's nicked off him. And close up is the duff canners. Meaning they got a, a virus. He's uh, sorting them out as well. Right, variegated leaf. This is a new seedling of a white canner. This is the um, them, uh, field pollinated seed I had off a mate. Sylvan gave me a name, uh, uh, two blokes in the UK. I've been in touch with them who do their own seed pollination or what rubbish, meaning they've got their own strain stock, decent stock. And then he sent me some field pollinated seed to get new varieties because I'm just, it's a field and it's just left of the bees to cross pollinate and whatever and this is one of them so he got a new variegated leaf now he's waiting for the result to see what the flower is but that's how you get your new ones this is a photo of somebody else splitting his now I'll be, I'll be doing this at the end of this month or beginning of April mm -hmm. as long as the, the frost stay away but this is what somebody's doing in the, in the States. And I'm just splitting them. So there's one, obviously, because you've got a shoot on there. So you've got a bit of root on it. Here's another one. So that's last year's flower stem. And you can see the chaps coming out. Could somebody mute you? Just come on. Got a bit of background music. Talk. There's another one, like there's a big clump. So he's got a shoot on there. But these are wet as well, mine are bone dry. Don't know whether these are just like, or just to got them up. I don't know, they might have done. It's been growing them outside and they got protection. There's another one who's split. But that's what I'll be doing in a, three or four weeks. Can of red tiger, another one. I like it in the north, nice variegated leaf. Nice flower. Right, this is on our um, Facebook group for the gardening club. Just advertising our general meeting. So growing sweet peas for show. PowerPoint presentation by Fifth Cooper. Another speaker I've got to explain to our members how to grow and exhibit sweet peas in time for our show. Extra classes have been put on in the schedule to cope with the influx. Learn, exhibit, enjoy. We're all gardeners. So that was a few days. Just to remind them, those who forgot, the general meetings coming up. Right, this one here, this is an extra one for you. Because I've run out of garden stuff. But it's still interesting. When I joined the mob, uh, obviously I never even thought about the wood machine. I was underage anyway, 15. But you had to be 20 to have the rum. And uh, Pusser's rum, gunpowder proof. This is a uh, 95.5 proof. Good brew. Right, the first bit there, Limey, nickname given to the Royal Naval Sailors by the American counterparts in reference to their compulsory compulsion. Consumption of citru uh, citrus board or ships in 1867 to prevent scurvy. The Aussies used to call us limes and all. Uh, that's the wardroom. The Admiralty finally acknowledged 1824 that there were perhaps a few too many stories of drunken subordination and dereliction of duty in the Navy. As such, the daily tot ration was reduced from a daily half a pint of rum to a quarter of a pint to all compensate the sailors for having their rations and perhaps a mutiny. Two shillings was added to their sailors' monthly wages. If they didn't want the rum, they could have coffee and tea as well. 
Get on to the next one. Rum ration also called a tot. A tot of rum. There was a daily amount of rum given to sailors and all memberships. It was abolished in 1970 after concerns that the intake of strong alcohol would lead to unsteady hands when working machinery. Good excuse, I suppose. So the rum ration, or the tot, was from 1850 to 1970. Um, rum ration was served in one particular barrel known as a rum tub. This was originally uh, decorated and was made of oak and reinforced with brass bands and brass letters saying, God say, uh, the Queen, God bless her, or the King, she won anyway. Uh, up spirits, usually midday, 12 noon. Up spirits was called. And, uh, that's when you had your tot. Uh, these were blended in various vats. Um, these have been stored in riverside warehouses, ready for shipment. Most of the old, much of the old yard today has been developed into luxury apartments. It's down London. However, two former rum warehouses still exist on the riverbank looking over the Thames. So that's how they used to be. I should say them are still open to the public. The mess, also called the most stick board ships, is a designated area where military personnel socialise it and in some cases live. No, all cases live. The term is also used to indicate a group of British personnel who belong to separate messes, such as officers' mess. Um, when I joined the fire service, the um, dining area there was called the mess. But there's quite a few things from the Navy which carried on the tradition in the fire service. There was quite a few ex-forces in the fire service. But there was three tier bombs. That bed is a bunk. Remember that one there, and there's one at the top. They you know, have camp beds and hammocks in some of them. Right, rum fanny. That's the rum fanny. That's what they do, take the rum in, take it back to the mess. Rum fanny, a sailor's personal grog, grog in the rum, receptacle named after young Fanny Adams, who was murdered and dismembered, dismembered at the Deptford. The Julian Yard in uh, London, where mutton was tinned for distribution to native vessels. The sailors detained for this process meet mutton fuel rumours that parts of Fanny made it into the tins. Now, I don't know where this comes from, this one, Fanny, Am Fanny Adams. Uh, you know, sweet Fanny Adams or sweet FA. Is that where the saying comes from? I don't know. And there, Empty the drums, the Queen, God bless her. And there it is, and there's the tot. There's different measures on this, different size. And these got the black caps on, so that's during the war, they just have HMS on the front. So, uh, God bless her, I've got it on there. And this was later on, because I got the name of the ships on. Grog the King, God bless him. That'll come in now. Egg. Yes. Did the officers get different measures to the, the, the able seamen or what? Everybody else except us got it got it neat. We had to have it uh, two to one with water. All oh, right. Okay. So that was a measure there, the top measure. And that was the measure of a tot as well. Why do it yourself? So when you get, get the glass, that's it. So if you, if you, if you want somebody to do your, your, your watch or a shift for you, instead of giving them a packet of fags, they might give you a signal that a tot will come in instead. And that's what they used to use. Splice in the main brace, the navy rum. Splice in the main brace, uh, last happened. And the last uh, 
the fleet review where the Queen did it and because of the work we put on and the amount of time it took just to get it involved every every ship lined up down the Solent if you remember I put that on a few months ago it says uh, splice the main brace where everybody get a total rum well them over the age of course and the uh, Old Charlie, when he gets knighted, but he's um, July in it, he, he might even do it then, as far as the main race. But that's the only time now. Is that the last one? Yeah. So we'll go back on this. Just a few more things I've got to keep you up to date on. Um, Um, so his rush is about 18 from that. Then the chap who stopped the rum was a, a so he was admiral of the fleet, or he was once admiral of the fleet. And it was Sir Michael Lee Fan Yu, he died in 1970. Because then I was at HMS Excellent, which was a gunnery school down in Portsmouth. Because I was at the gunnery school, uh, this Sir Michael Lee Fan Yu, they buried him in London, in military honours and all this crap. And I had to lie, I was part of the guard. I had to lie in the cortege for his, for the funeral. And then I looked into it on on, um, on the internet, and then got somebody else down stopping the top so god knows what happened there but we were told was not we all sniggered at him well when his coffee went past us under our breath of course we used to have bloody tot no i dipped out a year and a year later and i already got it but i was still too young distilleries they had was in uh, jamaica we did the top for them trinidad and tobago in the British Virgin Islands. I used to get the rum. Um, Rashtin was cut in 1823 and again to a traditional amount in 1850. Right, that's that gun. Let's move on. This was off rolling. New compost bay starting to fill and start working. Bay one, full 50 50 mix. One year old wood chip and I'll pack a boo warm up nicely. Tourists with the elements they eat, and he's connecting to the house, central eating, cheap and British cash. Mm -hmm. We was talking about earlier on how good uh, wood chip is. It's going to be good as a natural product. But only keep us up to date on them. And this was uh, Paul's Molly, his youngest was her birthday during the week. And uh, the methodology he bumped on over. Pleased to say that one's took in the, the tunnel, the Kazan Primary School. That's why I did the kids' gardening club. As you can see, the onion sets in the drinking cups. And that's a birthday cake I made out of our smoke and put a candle in for her. Another one to do with the gardening club. Um, the kids' class. I could put in one flower, one veg, one fruit. And there's Molly with a flower in. Going on our mall. Draw my town. This is the big um, post of this put up in our zone. And Ben got in the drawing. And, uh, the Tipton twins, obviously from Tipton, which I drew far away. And there's one that came to see the, the, the faulty ambassador there. There's yours truly. He's old overall. There's Des, the weatherman. There's Aaron, he sneaked his brother in and all. I don't know if I've put this on before. Look at that for uh, camouflage. Beautiful. Right, learning with experts. Anything like this that comes on, I'll look into it. Um, obviously, I'm still learning myself. I just want to see who's doing it. So, I looked into it even more. Uh, well, there's quite a few RHS 
which are now a horsey there, horses being free. But uh, there was other people on, single people just doing their little things. So I thought, like, I ain't gonna, you know, I'm just asking. So I just sent him a message, can I add my composting methods? I'll make compost ready you should use within a month. Uh, sent him me one of my things off YouTube. Oh, great. We'll take a look. Thank you. I had nothing back off them because basically I think I said because it's free, anybody can have a nose. And uh, well, that's up to them. Somebody else that come on, uh, Earthworm Society. Great. This was probably two, three years ago. I don't even know it existed, but uh, it did exist, obviously. And it was uh, Kieran Brown, got in touch with me. I think he's a president of this. And he wanted me to give a, a talk on um, composting worms. I said, yeah, no problem. And I did, and uh, somebody else talked from the States. Elaine Ingram is the, the biggest. Um, person in the in the states who's into compost teas, worms, bacteria form like that gump. And the, the second host of the stage, she was speaking as well the same day I was talking here. And when I said um, I did my spiel, because there was Q and A's at the end. And I said, oh, I put carpet around it. Because I want my compost to work twelve months a year. And the carpet goes around in winter. Because I want my compost for twelve months a year. I'm still using it. And uh, I come back and says you don't need carpet around them. It doesn't have no effect whatsoever. So I said, well, it's common sense to me. If I'm cold in winter, I put a coat on. Exactly the same as my compost bin. And they don't like it because I don't see the back. So, Mick, uh, yes. I've got two big full-size wheelie booms for my worms. I die wrap them this year, it's wiped a lot out. Yeah. There's a proof. Well, I knew it anyway. But I day like it because I answered it back. Or proved it wrong. Well, yes, answered it back, but proved it wrong. Because obviously, for her to say that, because I think it's written 18 books or something. So I must have been advocating this in the books. So I had to say something in a row. The same chap there he is, Kieran Brown, is doing exactly the same thing again. Introduction to Earthworms, which covers all worms. Now this come out and it's a, it's a free Zoom, Thursday 27th of April. If anybody's interested, eight, uh, eight or nine. But I'll, I'll put my day down and I've got one free ticket, which is free to watch. And the probably Q and A's at the end. Anybody's interested, just give us a kick. And I'm going to join the FBI, because this Sun newspaper, so it's got to be true. The FBI believes the COVID virus originated in a Chinese lab. Bloody Dora. And as bad as that. Spies. Right, if I remember, I needed an extra room for me, Gladiel Cormac's, when they go out. For me walking down there so i took that lot off last week that's now dried so i've got to tape this up to the side of the glass so i've got my clear tape again this is sticking as uh everything is nice and dry i've got the, the tissue to wipe all the gum off if there's any on there so i've just pulled it tight and taped it keep just keep it out of the road now i can walk up there perfect so that's coming down this side, across the pathway. That gap in between the two slabs is a perfect width for me to push that down level. So that, that's out the road, I ain't gonna trip up at enough. And uh, for the day, because that was sticking out, I just put a house brick on that 
just persuading it to stay down. Next day I took it off and it stayed down. Persuaded it. Perfect. Another job out of the road. Right, blackberries. Um, last year's growth, which is that. That's where we. I will get the fruit this year. So you remember he didn't do very well last year. The yellow leaves for some, so I just cleared him off, put another one in. So that growth which he will give me this year, that'll be next year's fruit. But I should get enough off him anyway. We have a close up on him, and you can see the new shoots coming out of every leaf axle, which is what I want. It's quite a bit of fruit now showing signs. Uh, and while I'm at it, I'll take them covers off. Right front of the house, uh, kitchen window up here, cars I'm on the drawer. Uh, this old growth, as you see, so it's all dried off now, straw colour, it's dead. That was the old uh, from area from last year, but I left that on to just protect the new growth what was underneath but uh, now this, this has come through the from here as you can see so I'm going to pull all the old crap out as I would do if it was a growing and the, the flower had finished I don't cut them off if you pull them out they'll come straight out from the ground so new growth will come out so you can see that I've pulled them out so that's come out from the ground itself Perfect. One side done. Uh, go back on him. Azalea there is nice and healthy. One there, he done very well. So I had a close inspection. He's still there. So I just cut all the old gum from him. It's better. And that's the lot done. There's a couple of these in flower now. But that looks a bit better on the front. And what are we getting? Frost again. Thank you very much. I'll just zoom in there. That's a bit blurred, but just to show you the birds having a bath. Those are the feeders at the top here. And that's just also to wait to them. Right, I'm glad I did the wall during the winter, although it was cold at times. But I needed that to get done, and the fence walloped. While the, the, there's nothing growing in the sense this lot here, because I was walking on this lot. If I'd left it for the good weather, like starting from now, well, next week, I'd have been tramping over this lot. So I'm glad I did that while I did. Right, uh, anything growing in tops, tubs, same as this raised bed, they will drop down. These have been filled. You don't see how much they've dropped down with the overwinter rains or whatever, just compacting it. So, them were going to be filled up uh, this week with uh, my own compost. I just took the straw off, top dressed it with my compost, and then put the straw back on. But because we got the frost coming again, no, I'm going to leave it till next week or till after the frost. So, that's a job. Uh, same as these as well. Him, I, I, I should have done this earlier on before he started coming back into growth. When he was dormant, just upend him, tip that lot out, and then put new muck in the middle, meaning that would lift him that way. I don't want to top dress him. I top dress him from bulk, if that makes sense. But I should do that next year now. So much I did miss. But, uh, just shaping the chap, helping him out. Well, all my old stuff which has died off, uh, top of the garden, I'm going to take that up now, take him off. So I'm picking all the old dead stuff up there and pulling this lot out of here. So it was all along this wire netting as well. And one of the new growth coming through. Uh, delphiniums. You see, last year's where I've been chopped them off, 
So there's, there's two lots of growth or two lots of flowers high enough from last year. So there's some. I mean, them are probably pulled straight out in order to pull them out, I suppose. Give them more room to grow. And we see that pretty frost is coming. Well, this chap, he was doing well. Even uh, I, I still got flowers on him. We would have a good frost. Well, he must have had a good him because he's cut him right back. So I've sorted him out as well. And this one, I think, is somewhat like Leander or something. Little red flowers. And they look very good last year. In fact, they don't look very good this year either. There's one here, obviously, where it is. And there's one at the bottom of the garden. And the one at the bottom of the garden I took out two years ago. But he's going exactly the same. Like them, I've chopped him off there. But he's on every one. But I might clear him off altogether. If anybody knows if he will come back again or not, seriously, Leander. But if he don't, I'm going to get him out. And uh, that'll give me a nice gap to put a canner in and leave him in at the end of the season. When I chop him off, I'll just top, top dress him with a straw or something. Or rabbit mug. So let's clean that lot off. Looks a bit better now. Let's thin him out. Instead of going everywhere now, my training against the, the fence need be put some oil canes in. But with a bit of luck, I lost him. Uh, is that Love Lies Bleeding or the other one? Bleeding Art. Well, he's just coming through. In fact, there's a. Um, put on the end, them and all. Well, there's, there's quite a few bits and pieces coming through. Which is a sign it's getting a bit milder. Still chopping me bananas for the house plants indoor. Uh, rainwater, just leave that 24 hours and use it. <laughs> this was World Book Day, I thought that was brilliant. Obviously, borrowed that off the net and all. Bougainvillea, he was outside in the top raised bed. He did well, done well. Obviously, I buried the pot. Um, but he's all died off now. But uh, that's all. So I've got to get all that dead stuff off, basically. All the dried leaves. So I took him outside. And I just started pulling the leaves off by hand. As you see, there's a couple of them off there. But what I didn't realise, Bougainvillea, they got pretty sharp spikes on them. So I was jogging myself until. Well, a couple of times now, just put my hand on the back and pull this way anyway. So I'm pulling the with the spikes, pulling all the rubbish off. One half done, turn him around, and we're all off there. Then I prune the chap, give him a bit of shape. I don't need to get too big for when he starts off again. In fact, I'll, I'll, later on, I'm going to job him again because the new gold will be coming out of that. So it'll be off the size again. But that's a bit clear to go back in. So I've just uh, given him a, not a checking growth, but I'll give him a little bit of a shock. I'm gonna give him a pick me up with a couple of drops of liquid fish. In lukewarm water, not cold, right water. Shake that up. Give him a nice feed. That slab's nice and level. And that's where I bung me a doorstop. Rooting in the tunnel, helping me out after the rabbit muck. Oh, my fig. Let's have a perv of him. Yep, new growth just started coming on. White roots, that's what I want. It's got a good brew under him, he's going to do well. But as soon as he's ready, he will be potted on. Because eventually, he will go in one of these pots. 
when the weather's better, he'll be outside going in the pot. That's what I want. Uh, that one was in the greenhouse, but he was putting too much of a spurt on, so I bugged him in the tongue. In fact, he's coming out as well. Bloody blossom on my peach tree. Well, I had that on last year as well. So I'm going to drag him out and put him in the tunnel. He's okay back in there. So I've got them in the tunnel now. And uh, because this was three days ago, before they forecast the snow and frost. So this morning, what have I done? I took my peach out because I don't want to lose him. I'll put him back in the, in the greenhouse. He's okay, he's got protection from them two walls. That'll keep the frost off him. Right, the uh, little and Aaron, the youngest, he moved house last week. And he gave me all his house plants, all plants that have been outside. Some would work, half, I'd have been them. But slowly I'm uh, just throwing a fit, I've got bloody plants everywhere. I had to pot them on. So these are another two, and look at him, he's going to be popped down as hell. And that one, he's got a nice variegated leaf. But he's grown a bit uh, half, needed sorting out basically. But he still wants them, so I'll have a look into him. Yep, proper root band. Just open these up, tease them, because now all the roots just going around and around. So I'll just, just open them up. And that was the other one. Uh, not too bad, but it, it needs a bit of. I'm still going to pot him on anyway. Need a bit of fresh gum. What I'm going to use is a wood chip. Uh, so it might be a double handful of wood chip, clover, the Michelite, my compost. Um, from the, I think that's dried goat muck. That was all mixed up and worm cast. So I've got my next pot size up because I've got holes in paper on the bottom. So that come out of there, but he is going in there. So that will go in there first. Compost on these, so I've got in the same level at the top. Good brew, that's mixed up. That's going to look after them. They've all got the drainage. Open them root tops for a bug in. Yep, nice and upright. And then just push down the not on the plant itself. That'll do. Any bonds, I'll pay I lost him. Gotta sort them two out and all. A couple I did bung, that one, these was just pulling straight out. The, the leaves of them, when it was on the new shoots as well. Because these was left out, outside. And that one had added, so them two went straight in the bin. So there's another one he gave me. These was nice, but the, the flowers, flowers, the leaves go up, come down like an umbrella. I think there was four or five coming out of that. But they were died off, so I bid them. So then we're going to sort out them too. That must have been a corker, which did now. We're going to sort him out. And these two as well. My little chap, just give him a, a nice soaking. Pull that lot into there. And this one, there's an old growth, which you can see is dying off, so I've cut in three off and all. Is that new growth from last year? So now it's all one size, sorted in that. Austin pot, that is. Grandfather had in originally. Well, this little chap needs sorting out. Well, I put it 
Look at him there. You remember them? Uh, light grey base on him. Saw me pot out again. Ready. Right, there's them again. So I think when he potted him on, I think he, uh, on most of these now, and uh, obviously even just garden soil that he'd been using, but he buried him 2D. That is just one plant, got two coming up. So I took all the, the soil away, trying to get down. That's where I got into the roots coming out from the side of the. I remember earlier on when I was to pop my ceilings on. And then if they made a drinking cup and they need potting on to a three and a half pot, I used to pot up to the first true leaf. So that stem you've buried, you get extra roots out of it. And this proved it, because we've buried it. And it's got, although the money high for your roots coming out, but them roots will get larger and uh, you get a bit of root structure. But I want that stem out. And there it is. There, now you can see it is one. Right, there was the level, right, there's that light grey which was at the top. So I took all the roots off as well, took them off my thumbnail. There he looks a bit better, but I've got him crossing in. He's rubbing up against that. This is the same as any fruit tree, anything like that. Anything that's rubbing off, I take the weakest one off, which would be that one there. And obviously any dead stuff, so that one is there, I take him out as well. You're just shaping it basically, telling it where you want it to go. So he is going in there, obviously. Get the depth thing in. Hold him up right. Fill him. Right, I've cut the one off that was rubbing, you can see the cut there. And there's another one, he's very close to me. So now I need a persuader. And I've done this quite a few times with the fruit trees on the lot. You're persuading them where to go, meaning I want him to grow out. So I'm going to persuade him. But uh, you've got to have a soft persuader. Sponge, perfect. So that's now opened him up, only about an inch and a half, but it's opened him enough to persuade him to grow that road in him to grow that road. Because he's away from him and he's away from that one. So I'll just leave him on a couple of months. Perfect. Nice wear trim. Look at that, shadow, the sun come out. Still out. Mm -hmm. Once I've had a good watering, then I'll top dress them with the Mikulite. Just warm them on the middle. Now I'll level that off so it goes around to the rim as well. Because this is only a, like a fine spray. You take going to move that the Mikulite out the road. That looks a bit better in the house and all. There's a rouge and dogo for the Mikulite. That's so good. Right, a week's gone by from our committee meeting. So it's now our general meeting. Clonish South Football Club. Old Collingate Garden Club. That's me going up on the afternoon. Just taking all the stuff up. Ready for the evening. People don't realise the work is involved in getting ready for anything. So I've never had to do it. But now I'm going to start telling people. I just want to pack some at all. I want to have a shop then to sort it out. But basically, I, I, I saw the raffle out. We ain't paid for the raffle price for yonks. Meaning, we're helping the club out that way as well. And uh, me bringing stuff in. There's also people who volunteer to bring stuff in, of raffle prizes. Most of them are garden related. <coughs> so I took Lucian up with me and I, I dropped my stuff off. 
Uh, that was so that Aaron threw away when he moved out. That was in like his lean to bottom of the garden. Uh, basically, it's so ideal for somebody's shed or whatever, just keeping knickknacks in. I think there were six different uh, partitions. There's uh, three grow bags, which are perfect for moving them. Uh, greenhouse or anything like that, so you pick them up, move them around. Oh, perfect chilies. There's my tub from the top of the garden, which I bought now. The, the mint. And there's a couple of bottles there which I uh, found in his cellar. Mead and another cider. God knows how old them, them were, but I bought them down and all. The raffle book and everything else. Well, so I dropped that down on the afternoon. And then walk down. So this is going down on the night. We're not going to drink. And this was um, John and Philippa, uh, both from the National Sweet Peace Society. <coughs> As you can see the emblem there. They're not a couple. Well, they are. But, um, they are on the lot, if that makes sense. But a, a, a Boston speaker. So this, when you come in the door, obviously that's, there's a bar. But now because we need the big room, uh, so I've nicked this little table which nobody uses, just for, just for raffle prizes. Uh, Mark boarding that in is a good lad, Mark and I committee. Uh, Philippa uh, bought sweet peas in with her and donated them, and then the rest of my gum. Somebody pour that jar in. A little tap on the bottom, perfect. Or, uh, there's quite a few. We have a good um, input to them. So on the night, first thing I do, thank the Raffle Prize donators first. Also, uh, Steve Medica and Lynn from uh, Brum donated. Bloody, I like corms, cormets. Uh, Austin, thank you very much for them too. And I, I dish them out to the troops. So that was getting ready to kick off, filling up nicely. In fact, we fill the place out. That's this side and that side. Because he's, he's making that into a um, restaurant and uh, threatening not to knock us up. I talk wise and show wise because we need these two rooms so far right philippa because i got a bit of a sore throat did he then want to shout and our mic system was up the shoot and just stood in the middle instead of at the front which worked because everybody could hear her If we zoom in on that one there. Girl is showing sweet peas coming in on from Sigma Mars 2023. We're gonna break halfway through for the grub. Comms, dish them out. Did the raffle. And um Philippa also bought in about 30 packets of uh, well mixed sweet pea seed you can either have the old fashioned which was scented which you have to soak and you'll let you know but if you sell the old fashioned which have got the best scent which is what I want this year for the back garden obviously it was in the smell you know, outside here in the summer we better get a summer so that was good of her to bring them in as well and then uh, them lot went obviously. But a uh, Boston speaker, one of the best speakers we've, we've had. Uh, everybody was listening, which makes it difference. Nobody was talking, well, turned to keep quiet anyway. But uh, it was brilliant. And just uh, a couple of photos. Uh, Thomas Steve. I'm sure you told us who he was originally. I remember. The blog's growing sweet peas. That's the Sweet Peas Society. 
the, the, if you go on their website, uh, the first known records of Sweet Pea in Britain, dated from 1699, a Sicilian monk sent war seas from Sicily to a doctor, Nivel, who had a garden near Enfield. Many years later, he was given uh, the right to name Cabrini as per the monk. Illustrations from all of our. But if you look on their website, there's loads of stuff. Uh, like when you sweet pea produces sports mutations which create new varieties. Uh, 1737, pink and white, then painted lady. Little relative. Uh, Henry Eckford started a sweet pea seed business in Wem. That's where um, Wem Shropshire. I've got a mate from the mob. I don't remember, remember him. See, he lived in Wem. But uh, this is who uh, uh, Philippa idolises, Henry. He was just off off in Wem, and uh, that's where they've got their Sweet Pea show, which I'll come on to in a bit. Uh, Eggford development in Mount Flora. Pretty good sport. Uh, producer sport, this happened simultaneously in a number of locations, one of them being the garden of Althorpe Hall, if you remember, belonging to the Earl and Countess Spencer, grandparents of Diana Spencer. What a coincidence. Uh, National Sweet Pea Society, uh, about us, there's news, sweet peas growing out in road shows. Uh, there's loads of stuff on there if you're into them. Um, um, somebody else I'm getting into now. Because you can grow these in tubs, rose bed, garden, whatever. Uh, old fashioned is any pre 1914 variety with smaller flowers is known as old fashioned as they predate the introduction of the large flower. Uh, Freely Petal Spencers, the uh, Eckford Sweet Pea Society of Wem, that's what is to be involved with that, dedicated to maintaining interest in these older varieties which are freely available. And that's what it's doing, it's carrying on from that old blog, keeping the old fashioned going. Because uh, I asked her earlier on last year for our show. Was on a, all we had was a uh, sweet pea. I think it was one vase of sweet peas in our show. So I says, What different classes can I have? This is other class for old fashioned because they're scented and that's what we've got in. I think it's five different classes now. Next thing uh, Sweet peas in shoes, UK, 1699. Uh, Crystal Palace, London. July 1900, tremendous success in promoting the inauguration of the National Sweet Pea Society. We're just going about different shows. When I still doing trials, doing sweet peas, but uh, just have a nose and watch it. And she sent me this yesterday, I think there's one uh, little alteration, might be the, the postcode, this one. We're just sorting that out. Well, I said, send us your details. Because uh, I'll get us this date on the night when he was doing the talk. Uh, and asked more me and Mark, we both said, I said, we'll go, we go, we go down for that day out. Obviously, it's a show as well, something different. And I looked at the calendar when I got home and uh, went away that weekend. Can't get out of it. So I'm going to miss it. Or, uh, I said I'd, I'd spread the word anyway. You take too far away when. Well, it's two day the uh, show Saturday, Sunday, and also you can enter uh, yourself. Uh, Sunday, you got free parking. But uh, I'll myself on that. Going through all the classes, there's another section, which is um, for an exhibitor who has never won. The first prize at the Wem Sweet Pea show, which would be any of our lot or anybody who's entering. And there's different classes. Bowl of mixed sweet peas, not more than 18, 
I don't think I love him. Get that one. One bars of seven stems. Then there's the old fashioned. These are the scented. Bowler mix. Uh, three peas, one bars of seven stems. That's if anybody's interested. No email, I thank you for coming, told her, uh, one of the best speakers we've ever had. So, you know, I mean, glad you enjoyed it. Your group uh, friendly and welcoming. We had a great time. Feel free to pass on my details because I asked any talks I'll give. Uh, the secretary is always asking me, have we got any details of other speakers? Speakers getting few and far between now. So I'm going to pass the details on to them. Sorry you missed the, the web. We look forward to seeing you, uh, seeing some of the group in July. What a brilliant talk. On the subject, there's my sweet piece from last year. And them are still growing. They have been job by the frost. Just to show you, just a little bit of protection, i.e. that wall. On the top of the garden, when I've cleaned all the rubbish off, there is get a close up one still there and just make out the leaves of the sweet pea and they're still climbing up and all but my sweet peas were incented they will be next year well during the week I had my mate back my little uh, albino whatever it is obviously I've had to zoom in that's, that's why it's a bit out of focus was if I showed myself at the patio door, it had cleared off. Lizzie, unmute yourself. Have you found out what bird it is? Yes, we're coming on to it. Okay. <laughs> we think we, we know what it is. Or... Okay. Yeah, we're coming on to that, Lizzie. Right. <laughs> but when I, I mean, I've seen him down the plot. He used to go in with the other sparrows when our mate dropped off the rabbit book. These lot used to go in. And I don't know whether it's a um, canary, budger or that had uh, escaped. But he got the body of a sparrow. Albino sparrow. He's at the back of the frame. So I'll then turn it to a video. But it's the same size, shape as a spanner. Mm. And then Suzanne sent me a, a photo link, which will come on at the end of this. I was talking during this filming, but just let it come on. <coughs> Suzanne sent me this, not your typical British bird, rare white sparrow, snapped in Wales. This is a few years ago, but uh, could be well, could well be one of them. That's all we can think of any road. Lynn, I saw you click in. Am you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, Boston, all yours, Lynn. Thank you very much. Um, Mix asked me to uh, talk about my kefir. I started kefir about seven, eight years ago because of the health benefits. Um, there's two types of kefir. There's the water kefir and the milk kefir. The water kefir I have brewed and it is extremely nice. It makes a low alcohol, one to two percent alcohol drink, but it's fizzy. Um, and you make it with the, the grains 
the kefir grains and you add water and sugar because it needs feeding because they're bugs and I think if I remember ginger and lemon lemon peel but it made that much I couldn't keep up with it and it's got it is quite high in sugar although the bugs as they um, make more of these granules and break everything down the sugar is used Anyway, I decided that I'd keep to the uh, the milk kefir. So with the milk, you can't use, because it's a live bug, you can't use ordinary milk. You have to use for, um, organic, and it has to be full fat to give it the nutrition it needs. Um, I get it off the internet, a little company called Kombucha, and it's, it lasts pretty much forever if you look after it because it is a living thing so it comes like little jelly granules and and they will multiply so you can eat it um, give it to animals because it's quite beneficial to animals as well dogs etc or you can share it and give it to other people um, it's supposed to be healthier than bio yogurts because there's about 50 bugs in it rather than just one or two that you would get in a normal bio yogurt so it's got all the benefits of the bio which is good for your immune system the healthy gut flora um, good for allergies and it has lots and lots of other health benefits which i'd share a link on, on my facebook page um, it's very easy to make you get your granules and you add pint of, half a pint of milk and you leave it in a warm place it doesn't like the sun so or bright sunlight so you have to put a muslim over it and it needs oxygen so you can't put a lid otherwise it will just kill it and then you leave it in the summer it brews within 24 hours in the winter it can take 48 but i'll put it over the radiator so that it's done a bit quicker but also it tastes sweeter so it is quite tart because it's it's a yogurt but it'll taste quite um yogurt <laughs> if, if you if it's cold it it's got a sweeter taste um if it's if it's warm so once it's brewed you when you're looking at the jar you, the curds will start separating from the whey and it just looks like little clouds of whey of, of curd in the whey so you just put it through a filter and strain it until so you can either use it as a drink so you strain the lot so you get a spoon and you just strain it or you can just let the whey drip through and keep the curds and that'll give you a thicker yogurt um that's about it really so and then once you've got your granules that are left in the um, the sieve you put them back in your jar then you add the milk and they say that you don't need to to um wash the jar and i mean that I, I tend not to wash it every day i'll leave it probably a few couple of months and then after a while it gets quite thick inside so i tend to perhaps get another jar and start again but you they said you can carry on so this the kefir originates from i think the arab countries and it was one a way of preserving milk so they used to put the milk in goat skin and it was the bugs from the goat skin that would turn it into kefir. And that's it. To go through the photos. Yeah, so we've got um, the curds and the whey separated. So you've got the whey on the right, the curds in the middle, and on the left is the grain that's left. So you scrape everything until you just get the bit of grain on the left. And then that's the jar that you allowed your milk. But that started with a nice clean jar because the other one was, it had been there a few months. Um, the yogurt you can use uh, for anything really. Um, if you cook, if you use it in cooking or you freeze it, which you can do both, then obviously you're going to kill the bugs. So it's best to eat it as it is. So I put it on some fruit, stewed fruit, um, or I just eat it just eat it with some my cereal in the morning and then the way I will drink or sometimes if I because it in, in this it can grow quite a lot so it's it's a it's half a pint of yogurt every day sometimes I can't keep up with it so I've got the whey left in the fridge that I haven't used or might not use it on the day so I have been putting it on my compost 
Um, I probably should have Googled it to see, to let you know today if it's any good. But I, in my head, I thought, well, if we are having healthy guts by having all these bugs, and we're talking about having a healthy compost has got lots of bugs, so lots of different manures from different animals. I thought, well, the kefir is not going to hurt it. If I can drink it, it's not going to hurt my compost. So when I have got an excess, I will put the, the whey on, but not the curse, because I don't think you can put anything like that's got milk produce on, on your compost, so only put the, yeah. the, the see-through liquid. And that's um, my kefir brewing on just above the radiator and I've got the white cloth just to protect it. One, to stop stuff falling inside of it and then letting the air breathe and then we put the cloth over the lot um, just to, to stop, protect you from the, the sunlight. Um, when you go away on holiday, oh that's the um, way dripping through. When, you, when I go on holiday you can put it in the fridge for a week so you Top it up with your milk, strain it, top it up with your milk and leave it in the fridge for a week. But apparently it doesn't like that done too, too often. Um, but you can leave it up to a week in the fridge without doing anything to it. It'll just go dormant. Those are your um, granules of kefir. So it looks like a jelly. And I'm putting the milk to it. I need it in the middle now and then I shall leave that for 24 hours. Oh, that's, we're going back to, we're separating the curds from, or the, or the yoghurt from the, um, the granules. So if you separate it without letting the, cur the, the whey and the curds separating, you then get um, a thick drink, a kefir drink, which is what I think they're selling in the shops. But it, it works out quite expensive if you buy it from the shops, whereas there it's just, I think the kefir granules cost me about £10, but they'll, they've last, I think those are three years old now, so it'll last a long time, and then it's only the price of a, the, the, the organic milk for fat. Mm. And that's the curse and the way separated. But I use it for cooking. Sometimes I get so much, I, because it is, you know, you, you can get quite a lot. Half a, half a pint of yoghurt a day is quite a lot to, to, to manage. So I might um, cook with it, make a quiche, um, and use it in other sorts of cooking as you would with yoghurt. Oh, my garden. These are my hellebore. Um, this one I got from the shop in Stourbridge. The little green grocers opposite um, Wilkinson's. They were there was it wasn't last year; it was a year before, and they were selling six six of those for seven pounds, I think. And they are the um, Japonica, I think, something like that. And that's another one, another Hellebore. I'm sorry, I don't know the names, but I think it's a supposed to be a black one and there's my little tete-a-tete -tete at the back of the garden and another this one I think is just they do not multiply quite quickly um, but they don't come true to nature because they threw seeds and I although I bought that I think it's one that's um, sort of not a proper um, Christmas rose, it's just one that's been propagated and gone a little bit wild, but I, I think it's pretty. And then my little primulas have already come out. I think that's it. Um, that's it, that's more of my little tete a tete and um, my other um, Christmas roses. There's some more of those Christmas roses with the tete a tete. Those are the yellow ones, and they do two or three um, petal deep. They are quite pretty. I've got um, what, and, and another one. I've got about 20 or 30 of the hellebore because I do love them, and they do add a bit of colour in the winter. Yeah, nice flowers. They are so pretty. 
they're not scented, but they are pretty. Yeah. Uh, one way of displaying them, um, like Ash would do, is to cut the flowers and put them in a bowl of water so that you can actually see the the, 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 the inside of them because a lot of them droop, so you can't see them as much. Yeah. But they grow in my, most of them grow in my little forest area. It's It's basically three trees. And when I moved to my house, um, about 10 years ago, seven, eight years ago, it was completely overgrown. You couldn't see anything and there was loads of debris and then there was loads of stones. So I cleared the lot, brought the canopy up and then um, my dad sent me money for my birthday and Christmas. So I bought plants specifically for dry, shady area, including the hellebore. How often do these, uh, or, or how long will they flower for? They, they flower for quite a long time, um, a few weeks. I'm not sure exactly, but certainly a few weeks. They just stay in bloom. They don't, they open up and just stay. Yeah. Is there enough colour about now, is there, flower-wise? No, there isn't but much. They, these are nice. Aren't they? they are very pretty. I have got one from Ashwood because they... I mean, he's well known for them, yeah. but well, they are quite expensive, but I did treat myself to one. Lynn, brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you, Lynn. Lovely. Uh, another one. Why? Because he's a Bougainvillea bonsai. Obviously from uh, New Delhi, but uh, I love the colour of them. Get in. Lost in. Right, I had a quick nose of me uh, wine. Three on the go at the moment. So the spice banana, parsnip, me carrot whiskey, which I ain't done for a while. But, uh, it's clearing well. I'm still gonna, I think I'm gonna do him. I'm gonna check him July. Uh, July as well. That one you got a then three I'll do for a bit. Right, another two uh plants of Harrod, what he give me? I should say these be pop man, yeah. Pop man. Go, oh, Bennett. So let's help him out because I've been under a bit of stress. So get me pots ready. Open up the roots, help them out. I suppose I could have cut a bit of that off. I don't want to give him too much of a checking growth or a shock. So them lot. I'm going to pull all the, there's about four or five leaves I've took off there just to get a bit of a stem on it. So he's not buried again. Then I'm going to cut all this enough off. With the scissors. So I'm opening, taking away all the roots from that stem because obviously he's earthed him up. I'm going to take a few leaves off just to help the chap out. So he looks a bit better than him. He's got a good brew under him. And I'm going to give him a The other one was worse than the first one. But he has got white roots, so he's uh, starting to go again. Just asking you to help him out. Pot him on. So that's them two done. This chap that the overhanging leaves have come off. He was a bit root bound as well. So the stuff, it looked like bark chip as a top dressing. So that lot went in the mix because that would be good drainage in the mixture itself, the compost. Yep. Another pot pan in. Next pot side up. And now this little chap. It must have been a corker when he was a nice green leaf. It was like a, a miniature. I don't know, some of you get in the desert. But still white roots there. Although he was slightly soft, I thought I'd get a bit him. 
I can't give the benefit of the doubt of what he wants. I found a, a dried up worm in him, so I helped him out, pulled in the covers on my raised bed. We ran half inch, there were some boys coming to me. So once I've got the Mickey light up, I'm just screwing up so this comes down like a fine rain and that ain't gonna look the Mickey light away. It's probably the best way to do it you get a good wet and fuss then put the Mickey light on. Very disappointed in the daffodils I planted last year, turned out to be marigolds. Obviously nicked that one all. That's why I put throw in the feet I finished it. There's another one in the bathroom I'm gonna do it all. Somebody in the mob bung there brushes on. So these are what I had when I joined the mob, 66, so these are uh, Seven year old, some of that. Basically, the issue of brushes, there's an arrow there. That's what we call a pusher's arrow. Anything to do with pusher, the government has got an arrow on. So, this seems so with arrow, like if it ain't yours, you have nicked it. Or, uh, right, Russian. There's a proper poet, he loves the food, spag ball. The parmesan. Love spaghetti and all. Oh, can we try her? Bloody loved it. Look at her little face. That's how it sits. Remember Lady in the Tram? I thought, go on then. Let's get to go. Worked. Right, Bird of Paradise, I must have had this four years. I think it takes five years to flower. So with a bit of luck this year, might get it. Still doing my weekly feed for me lemons. Uh, there it is. One scoop, half a litre. Go back on that one. Rain water, obviously. There's a bug in the middle of the pour, and that goes all the way around, or rather, slowly, so the lot gets a good soaking. Let it drain through, empty the dish underneath, and uh, that's how they've grown from uh, last week. Put a bit of meat on already. Right, this is uh, tomorrow, up in York. Looking forward to this. I was getting put up for the night, but uh, the woman who's pulled me up, woman up last night, is I've looked at her email again. And uh, I've just remembered, I told you I was gonna put you up. But since then, has had, um, has, has took a lodger in from Ukraine. So it's got me, uh, B and B and the local holiday in as they go do. So I like me full English. Big rub. When I finish the enemy talk, I'll just say if anybody wants a drink, I'm on it down I think it's uh, six minutes away. Down the holiday in. If you want a natter, I'm buying a pint. And that's it people. We'll be here again next week, but not the week after. And uh, while we got everybody on, uh, Andy Wright, he, uh, he's having more tests. Susan, I very well either. Mark Jackson, he's been uh, not very well either. He's coming back slowly. Well, that's life, eh? Yeah. We've always got so much sometime. But I uh, hope you've enjoyed that tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, right. Paul, are you, you asleep? Paul Davis, he looks fast asleep. I must be but No, I well, bloody woke him up, look. Cheeky <laughs> 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 bugger. I'm just getting two stars. Paul, we've just been talking about you all the way through the zoo. 
Hindi niya ba coming? They all know why. He's at a funny age, mate. <laughs> right, anybody got any photos for next week? I've got, I've got no extra to throw on now. Even if it's just three or four or something. Mm-hmm. All right. New growth for different things. Or what yeah. you go and doing somewhat in the greenhouse. Got me chilli seedlings going. I'll have a couple of photos of them if you want me. Oh, good man. Boston. Hiya, Mick. It's Kat. Right. Hello, Kat. Hiya. Do you want me to do something? Yes, please. Show, show you where we, we grow and everything. Oh, oh. Have you got an yep. interpreter? <laughs> <laughs> How rude. <laughs> it's supposed to say you cheeky bugger. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. That's why I put my zooms in. No good for kids. Yeah. I'll, yeah, if I'll you look, can, all, anything. Yeah, I'll look to put some stuff together because um, where we grow, we're going to be redeveloping. So it's it's a bit rough and ready at the moment and they're a bit tatty, but... No matter. Yeah. Okay. Real. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, yeah. Mick. See you next Thanks, week. Mick. Okay, Thank then, you. people. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.